This week's uh, video, we're going to be looking at uh, an Edward Profit uh, kit in their BF110 G2 and 148th scale. So let's open her on up. I'm going to start with the clear parts uh, this time simply because they're the ones that are on top. Now one thing this kit does include is two different versions of the rear canopy part. One that for use if you're installing it with the rear firing machine guns and one without as one of the option parts includes that particular variation of it. So having both parts does uh, make it a lot easier to paint as well because obviously you can swap in the other version have it masked off so you can very least uh, use it as an insert while you do the rest of the painting. This also includes obviously the different uh, holes for the variant antenna types, all of which are nicely uh, molded here. Continuing on, once I get this back in its little bag. We have a couple additional clear parts for some of the other uh, broken down parts and as well as the gun sight. Again, very nicely rendered. Now, a nice thing about this kit is it does include two different um, gun gondolas for the 110. Uh, oops. Both the uh, dual 20 millimeter gondola as well as the larger 37 millimeter gondola and the appropriate parts for them. Uh, my only real complaint here is that the 37 millimeter does seem, I don't know, it just seems slightly either under scale or uh, not molded correctly. Um, obviously, I think it could have been done better, and I'm almost certain there's got to be uh, aftermarket metal barrels that you can swap in for it. But obviously, having them as option parts are a nice inclusion with this kit. Now here's where you can really tell just how uh, large this kit will be once constructed with the two wing halves. Uh, you can also e easily, well, not sure how well this will show up on camera, hopefully it will. But you can see just the fine degree of um, panel lining and riveting work that's been represented on this kit. Uh, you also have, obviously, some of the intake bays as well as the foundation for the main gear bays here on these underwings. Uh, they also include uh, marking holes for where you need to drill for some of the underwing uh, st stores options. Uh, the only thing I would say here that could be improved would be if the mounting tabs were a little larger and longer just to help you know obviously once it is attached uh, continuing on we have one of the two engine halves as well as uh, or actually both in halves sorry as well as uh, one style of propeller the larger paddle style uh, base of the cockpit floor uh, two ver options for the instrument panel either a molded option or a flat version if you're using photo etch fret. Uh, you also got our tail plane, vertical tail plane, and one of the machine guns. Uh, next up we've got the bulk of our uh, assemblage for the landing gear, raising all the various struts, the main gear, ooh, 
I'm all over the place today. So it's main gear and their various applicable linkages and as well as a couple other odd and in parts for detailing. Continuing on. Uh, more parts for building up uh, the internals of the kit as well as the uh, cockpit rear gunner as well as our uh, horizontal tailplane. Not a whole lot to add in regards to this particular sprue, so carrying on. Uh, here we have our two wing halves, or not wing halves, fuselage halves, as well as a couple different nose cone options, not all of which are used in this particular kit. They're obviously having them is nice, as it does help you build a particular variant you want. Uh, under wing or under fuselage fuel tank, uh, not used on this particular version, but again, nice to have as included, as well as a different version for the horizontal tailplane. Now, the next sprue comprises basically all of our armament options, as well as our external fuel tanks, our rockets, bombs, and a couple other odd and in parts, as well as mounting brackets for all of them. Uh, overall, not a whole lot to say here. They're, Edward's done a very nice job uh, giving you a large diversity of armament options. Uh, this sprue gives us uh, more cockpit parts, a different style of uh, propellers, as well as obviously prop hubs for them, gear bay doors, uh, another version of the instrument panel, as well as inlets, and various other odds and ends, as well as our main gear wheels. Last sprue up, we've got the build up for the, our engine detail, including our um, exhaust nozzles, as well as various antennas and other small detail parts that go into detailing this kit. Uh, this kit, yeah, excuse me, this kit also includes uh, resin radiator covers for the air inlets, which is a nice inclusion. Uh, kit also includes masking, uh, decals that you can use which are a nice conclusion I've used them before with Edwards p39 kit um, as far as aftermarket parts go I would say definitely it's worthwhile uh, picking up some of the Edwards masks as they're very nice I highly recommend them on the whole uh, but I digress a little next up uh, we have our photo ash fret that includes detailing for the cockpit area, our instrument panels, as well as seat belts. We also are there are various radiator inlet covers, which are all very nicely done and definitely add a greater level of realism to the kit. Now moving on to our decal sheets, we have a plethora of marking options and stencil detail. Very sharp and very uh, well done and properly colored sheet. Uh, fantastic job here. Now, one last little down before we move on to the sheet is this little uh, correction notice they included with the kit for what parts to use for the tailplane. Uh, this is something I do like about Edward is that you know if there is an issue they'll include something like this to correct for it. Now let's get everybody back in. All right. So moving on to our instruction sheet. Um, 
Kit is a definite complex build. Um, this is the one downside of Edwards Profit kits is that they are definitely not for the novice modeler as there's just a lot you gotta do and if you're not careful you can easily uh, goof up and miss a step or put the wrong part on as this because this kit has a lot of different options such as you can see here which they do thankfully uh, label pretty easily so you, you can tell um, which parts you need for which but it's still something that could easily be missed as yeah there's just a lot of complexity especially if you're using the photo etch parts to add up the detail again you can see the different breakdowns of the, which um, holes you need to open up for the different armament options uh, which there are a decent number with this particular kit Yeah, this is definitely a kit not, not for the fan of heart. As yeah, the big thing is going to be paying attention to what you're doing and making sure you put on the right parts in the right order. Um, again, as I said, we have our different options for the canopy sections open, closed, and so forth, as well as our different armament options and the breakdown of which marking uh, get which armament option. Now the fact that they do include them does mean you're not limited to what they include, which they give you a total of five different options from various theaters of the war. Um, yeah, overall, definitely a nice kit. Uh, and obviously they also include stencil detail. So yeah, um, definitely a, a more complex kit than you typically are going to be looking at. Um, if you're prepared to do a lot of work, um, definitely uh, consider this kit. As in general, Edwards kits, in particular the Profit kits, build up to fantastic models. Obviously, though, you are going to need to put the work in to get it there. And... You know, prepare for a bit of a slog to do it. But obviously, great thing about Profit Kits is that they do give you a lot of options. You know, if anything, I would say get it just for the fact that you have this wide array of options of how you want to build it. So, yeah, that was a look at Edwards uh, 148th scale BF 110 G2 Profit Kit. Until next time.